Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and welcome to part 21 of my let's play of Amayui Castle Meister. And you said to us at the beginning there, would we like to try her cooking? So let's see what her scene is. So Avaro happens upon Mikeyu and Eel. And noticing is they're eating something tasty. So this is lunchtime at the castle. So Eel offers Avaro some of what Yo and Mikio are eating. Alright, don't mind if I do. And Avaro is decidedly impressed by this. Yep, Mikio does a bit of bragging for Yo. Yo's a really good cook and she could work in a in a kitchen if she could. If possible. Eel's a bit demure about accepting it. A bit modest about saying she's good at it. Navarro agrees with Mikeo, however. But Eel's been unable to find work in a kitchen. Now on the one hand, Eel gets judged by her looks a lot. Although there were times when they, he'd, she'd gotten kitchens to dry her test dishes. Recall that Mikio was having trouble finding job as a magic user because she was too young as well. Anyway, sometimes the shops would try her dishes and hire her, but she'd get fired straight out after not very long. And well, that's really unlucky. I wonder why they would hire you and then just let you go all of a sudden. She's definitely good at it. Well, she doesn't know the reason, but she thinks that she certainly has something lacking. So what would be lacking? Well, to eat is to steal life. You have to pay your respect and eat it and eat what you're and eat your meal deliciously. Cooking is a serious uh, a serious battle. Eo hasn't reached the peak of enlightenment in this. She still needs to deepen her understanding of life. It's pretty unusual for her to talk that uh, passionately about anything. So she asks if Avaro is full yet, but he isn't, so he would like to have more of her food. Alright, she'll make some more right now. Having people eat her food is good training. <laughs> no.
no comment? Well, I've always surprised by this. Obviously. Eo <clears throat> loves cooking. <laughs> that last part, she's saying uh, she's mincing. She's surprisingly expressive when she's cooking. So, she's having fun, is she? Her eyes are surprisingly sparkly. Well, since she's concentrating so much, it's a bit like she's in a battle. Isn't she cute? Huh. And more than cute, Avaro would say scary. Did Mikeo know this? That this might be the reason she got fired? She never thought of it that way. But the food she makes is really tasty. Mm, yeah. This is a bit too ridiculous for him to put his finger on any one thing in it. Did you know that cut rhymes with boil in Japanese? Okay. Well, this is her individual personality. So she can make food for our employees, but we probably ought to end it there. It's a pity because she really is a first-rate cook. Now she's talking about how you set the char marks on things when you're using fire. I've always just going to pretend like he doesn't see this and eat it. Yeah, it'd be pretty nice if not for that spectacle that goes along with it. Next up is Mikeyu. Mikeu wants to talk to Avaro about magic. In particular, her magic books. So Mikeu is able to read her magic books better than before, thanks to Avaro's instruction. But she wants to be able to use magic even better. But Avaro can't do much more than teach her how to read these things. He doesn't know any magic outside of a few things, a few tricks in battle. No, oh, no. I said that exactly backwards. Avaro doesn't know any magic that's useful in battle. Basically his engineering work means he uses magic in his crafting. So although he can teach her the letters and figures and things, aside from that he's not going to be much help. But he recognizes what she's un uneasy about and knows a good way to set that right. A long time ago he made a certain tool. Well, Mikael wants to be a wonderful magician in the future. And he has something that can prove whether she can do that. This tool is something that measures a person's magical talent. Well, she's excited to know just how much talent she has. She has said 
a few times up to now that she's a young girl overflowing with magic talent, but she doesn't have any proof of it yet. So it's kind of self-styled. So he's going to get it prepared. Or perhaps find it. Anyway, here Avaro asks her if she knows what he, his job is. In case we needed another explanation of what an engineer is, it's a mage who can make stuff. Short version. That's right. It's a craftsman who uses magic arts in the crafting process. Avaro would like to... Avaro tells her that he learned engineering from a certain guy, but that guy only used crafting and no magic. At the time, Avaro wondered whether that was really true. He said himself that he had no magic skill, but Avaro wanted a way to test it. Then he made this. The flowering magic test rod. She succeeded and then she notices it just looks like a rod. Okay, so if you hold the rod, depending on the person's talent, the rod will let out some little fireworks. So it's fire magic? Well, no, it's more like... More like a visual effect and not harmful. Although you probably shouldn't point it at people. Mikeo asks how the test went with Avaro's teacher. No reaction at all. As he assessed himself, he had no talent for magic. So how did he react to that? Well, he had a hell of a laugh. In short, it meant that he was so amazing within his non-magical technical prowess that he could stand on level with people who did have magic. <laughs> and it's true, that is pretty amazing for someone to catch up to people with talent sheerly through hard work and effort. So, everything's prepared. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. There it went, there it went. How was it? It was a pretty and a large... A large flower formed. Pretty impressive. Splendid, really. So, she has talent? Can't you tell? Isn't that wonderful? Well, Avaro has some magic talent on account of being a half-elf. He wonders himself if he might be more skillful with magic if he were a full elf. Uh, now we see if ask if Avaro has done it. And yeah, while he was making it, he used it several times. 
he has magic talent, but it's not on Mikayu's level. So this confirms that Mikayu's got magical talent. So, so long as she doesn't fall behind in her studies, she'll be great one day. Oh, this is going to make things better. <laughs> Alright, so Mikayo is excited to share the news that she's been confirmed as a girl overflowing with magical talent. And Fia's happy for her. How did she know? Yeah, and she gets the explanation for the tool as well. Fortunately, they cut that part. Alright, Fia wants to try. Go ahead. Oh man, that's bright. This is just stupid ridiculous fireworks, in case you couldn't tell. Well, it's frankly one. You know, sometimes she says things and I forget to translate for you. She was asking if she had what kind of talent she had. And, well, wonderful, really. As expected of a goddess, she's probably one of the best under the heavens. No, oh, she's so excited for herself. And she runs off. Alright, she comes, she does something, and she leaves. Since Avaro said something nice about her, she was really excited. But, this is Mikeu's scene, isn't it? So, take it easy, Mikeu. Fia is a goddess, after all. So that means it's mistaken to compare herself to a god. That wasn't what Avaro was trying to say either. So, to know that she doesn't have as much talent as a god, she can't get down about that. Well, she just has to have, has to put out her best effort. Talent isn't everything. In fact, since she does have talent, this is actually more advantageous than otherwise. More advantageous? Yeah, she ha hasn't lost to Fia yet. Someday she's going to overtake her as a god and improve herself to that level. Boy, surprisingly she hates losing, at least you know, on this topic. But it's good that she's not down about it. Alright. Let's say it's good since she's all excited again. Uh, this is a scene that weighs on me. Okay. Coming to the castle is somebody traveling... Craftsman. He's found a good looking item that he'd like to buy. What is it? He wants to buy the magic lead that we made. 
Do you remember Jerkface who sold us the blue lid and then we made a crafting item, magic lid, out of it? This is that thing. So, does he know what this is? Well, obviously he does. But if he knows, that means he can't sell it so easily. Well, he's not saying it'll be cheap. He knows the value of these things, so he'll trade us something... something suitable. So he pulls out... a rather good-looking weapon. Well, it just said weapon, but Theo chimes in. Says it's amazing, like it's being drawn straight into her hands. And she says she wants it. So, obviously, it's a bow. Haha! Jo-chan is the Alright. He praises Fia's uh, eye for these things and says, of course, it's a very good bow. Now, do we want to trade for it? Here are its stats. It's a high physical attack power bow, but it doesn't add anything to magic attack. And I've been primarily keeping her to magic attacks. So it's actually not that valuable to me, per se. It has a null element, which is pretty rare and valuable, but I actually don't want to use it. Avaro recognizes it as a good weapon and thinks to himself about it. The magic lead is really valuable, so he doesn't want to part with it exactly. Although he doesn't say why. Does he think he'll get something better later? Is he going to use it in some other crafting? I'd like to know that. <sighs> but all we get is it's really, really valuable and we shouldn't part with it too easily. The reason this bugs me is it reminds me of Mato Kokaku when you had to make a series of decisions that would determine whether you could get the good ending or not and you had no way of knowing is this going to screw me over or is it going to be this one it seems like it's just a little side plot but is it really since I'm deciding not to play ahead in the game I don't know yet uh, but I do know if you would turn him down, Fia chides you for turning away a connection. And although I'd like to turn it down just to annoy Fia, I'm going to make the trade in hopes that this. Shh! In hopes that this will keep me on the path to the good ending. Alright, thank you, thank you. And that's that. I hope I didn't fuck up. So, we finally ran out of cutscenes after doing an entire day's worth and then three more. So I think I'm going to go to this free map. So, as we talked about before, it's pretty windy around here. So, yeah, you could get blown over out here. But if people were still willing to visit, that means there must be something valuable. He was a little less excited about the exploration. So, actually, I'll start with. Shutsugeki! 
If you want to know who can stomp everybody in this level, it's Karin. You will want to have Mikeyu around, however. Hmm. I hope I don't need to pull her back. Anyway. And this is exactly why Cotton can stomp everything. Everything except one enemy is extremely weak to earth elemental attacks. Hell, why not? I've got tons of SP potions. I want to capture another one of these. Probably several more of these. These are not valuable. This, not valuable. Yeah, there's nothing here but this guy. Ultimately. Okay, you just hold back a bit. We'll have these two take care of these guys. Mm. No, I need you alive. I don't need you alive. Hmm. She is not quite fast enough, but if she scores a critical hit, we'll capture it. Magic attack. You'll notice I'm carefully avoiding the traps. They don't do a lot of damage for this point in the game, but they give you the confusion. Mm. The confusion status effect, which makes you unable to use your skills. Oh, I want to capture that too. Now oh, that enemy there is not a big threat to me, hey? Well, oh, perhaps in physical combat it would be. No, actually, in my trial run, it did come up and fight her physically. Alright, capture time. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, might capture it this time. Nuts. Yeah, in physical combat, since she has her ice power skill and this is a fire, oh, a fire elemental enemy, she can really hurt it. In fact, we've got our choice of how to kill it. Hmm. It has a surprisingly good fire magic at its disposal. But it's not important. Alright, that was pretty rare. 
You probably noticed that Avaro didn't get a hit in. That's because of this counter ability. Sometimes when Avaro takes a swing, not only will Avaro not hit, but it gets to hit Avaro instead. It only has. Okay, here we go. It countered again. And it has a bit of regeneration as well, so... What a pain. Alright, come on, Enfia. Yeah, screw you guys. Okay, bad level up. At least he's a little faster now. And we captured it. Hmm. I don't think Mikeu is well suited to fight these things. Oh yeah. A plus four advantage in means that Mikeu can't do hardly any damage to those. So stand here and it'll attack you. Probably. I should have had a Varro go grab that thing in the corner. Yep. This is a free attack, so we might as well use it. Say, did you want to see this? Okay, no captures. Just an ugly ass fish. Alright, get yourself the Eldavaro. Mikeu is going to wait here. Because if an enemy comes in through the top entrance again, while we don't have a unit in there, it gets the whole room. And that would slow me down. Oh, I should keep Karin moving forward because he's the one who gets to stomp everything. Now, Io is also not a pushover. But if I tried to do everything with Eel, she'd probably die. Karin? Not so much. <clears throat> ah! That new skill we got for you. Was it last video? Has paid off. Let's go this way. Aside from that one enemy who had me cave fight, she is not very useful around here because of her low physical defense and the fact that everything's resistant to water. Hmm. It occurs to me I'm used to seeing these 
or similar looking enemies that were called Ankyrosaras in previous games. This is just Clam Monster Seras. So taking the Seras part and adding more was what I'm used to seeing. It took my treasure. Well, let's see this thing. That's interesting. Well, those things are pretty cute for, um, for what they are, I guess. But they've got really high physical attack and physical defense. So anybody who can't engage in heavy-duty physical is best warned to stay away. You can, however, lob earth shots at it with cutting. And not only can they not counterattack, they have really pitiful magic defense. Oh yes. Let's check common beast. An enticing shell beast. Female. Water type, one star. Nothing useful in there, so there's no use in capturing it. Nice. A new item. This is the purple magic crystal. No, purple crystal fragment. Remember this guy took that item? It's listed down here. It's four health potions. Small health potions. Now those female clam monsters will attack you on sight, but these other clam monsters will just wander around randomly. These use physical attacks. Okay, I've always not advised to fight anything that has water attacks. But although these things are resistant to water, they just use physical. So he shouldn't be in too much trouble. To say nothing of the fact that they don't appear to have any interest in attacking sometimes. In the item get screen after that, it showed it's those items that it stole from us. Ah, oh, yes. And Karin's about out of SP, so I'll fill him up. I still need Mikayu, even though she's in horrible danger of fighting these things. Because nobody else can reach this whirlpool to shut it down. So, Fia doesn't have really good physical defense, so she takes some damage. But she has a really good magic attack, so 
she can probably finish this off. Probably, maybe. Okay. There we go. Yeah, it's nice how often she'll get a critical hit or a double attack. Oh, how about that? If these things would actually seriously fight. <laughs> but we can't go complaining about enemies that don't do what we want them to do. Okay. I'm going to need a borrow way over there to open that chest. You bastard! Well, I didn't want to do this, but... If it goes into that corner, we'll need to get to it some... Oh, perfect. Not perfect. Alright, great. This means Fia can do a magic attack and kill it. Hmm. This is a rainbow colored pearl. Now, Karin's job in this room is to get close enough to get that monster to attack him. Yeah, you're done here, Mikayu. Here we go. Alright, enough animations. better. But any time we get attack is a good level up in my book. Hmm. And it gives me a second one. That's pretty rare. Alright. And there's this. That's all the gather points. So as long as I haven't missed anything obvious, we are done here. And since this is a free map, there's nothing to be said. I said last time I suspected each of these would have, I don't know, another challenging enemy to make each of them more impressive than the last. But it turned out to be pretty easy. <laughs> Pumpkins. This is our first pumpkin. In my trial run, I got like 10 of them, though. 
Oh, look, a cutscene. So, the exploration went pretty well. He also found a new pathway. So, this area is the Uragaru Twin Peaks. This is a path to the other peak. Alright, which is all fun and games, but we're going to head back to the castle for now. So that when we come here, we'll be fully prepared. So that's another map we can do here. Well, look at this. I was expecting a different character in this area. But this one's alright as well. If you checked out all the character profiles online, you would recognize that silhouette. But if you don't, you'll probably see it next time because we don't have any new cutscenes to view. So, that will wrap us up for today. And I will see you next time, YouTube.